So um, my presenta presentation topic is on epiploic appendagitis. So epiploic appendages, as you can see from um, the name, epiploic appendages, which are these tiny peritoneal outpouchings um, you can find on the surface of the colon and itis, um, suffix for inflammation. So it just means there's an ischemic infarction or inflammation of one or more epiploic appendages of the colon happening. So why or how does this happen? As you can see from this picture, um, these tiny uh, fat pouches contain obviously fat tissues, but also blood vessels. So when there's torsion, like uh, twisting of these fat pouches, or even um, like a spontaneous uh, thrombosis of like the venous flow um, occurs, that's when you get um, this ischemic um, infarction or inflammation of these appendages. Um, usually affects people in their 20s to 50s and obese people are more likely to be affected by this just because um, they're thought to have like larger appendages. So here, this is an axial view of um, CT with contrast of the abdomen um, of this 40 year old female patient. Um, her background history is that she has elevated liver enzymes. And this is a good image to see um, how normal the epiploic appendages look like because they normally are invisible on CT unless obviously affected by um, diseases like um, that can cause like, for example, this um, lady uh, intraperitoneal fluid or some sort of inflammation. So. Here, um, as the arrows point to, um, you can actually see the appendages um, of the sigmoid and upper rectum surrounded by um, ascites, which is the gray area. And this is another um, good image, axial CT um, of normal epiploic appendages um, of the sigmoid colon. Um, again, you can see all this like finger-like projection of pericolic fat pouches kind of floating um, in ascites. So then um, how does a patient with epiploic appendagitis present clinically? They typically complain of abdominal pain, especially left lower quadrant, and they have guarding also. Um, white count is usually not elevated, maybe slightly, but that's not typical. And also they usually don't have fever. And the reason why they're more likely to present with left lower quadrant pain is because um, even though these um, appendages, these fat pouches are present like along the entire colon, their dis distribution actually varies um, such that like 60%, about 60% of them are um, present at the rectosigmoid junction. So um, given it's, clinical presentation, um, it's uh, essentially, clinically speaking, um, hard to distinguish from other acute um, abdominal pain, such as diverticulitis and even like acute appendicitis if the patient has um, the right-sided symptom. And of course, um, there are other differentials such as uh, domental infarction and neoplasm, like the zebras. And um, so the reason why I picked this topic and I thought this was interesting is because um, even though this is a zebra topic, um, it actually accounts uh, for up to like 77% uh, of suspected diverticulitis cases. So it's relatively rare, but um, still important to know. And um, this case also shows uh, why uh, imaging is so important because clinically it's hard to distinguish this from other differentials. But of course, using imaging, um, um, you can see the differences. And obviously, um, epiploic appendagitis being self-limiting, meaning um, you don't need surgical or medical treatment, just uh, just need to do like basic pain management. 
um, and usually goes away within a week. So to prevent like unnecess unnecessary surgeries here, um, imaging is important. So um, we're gonna look at a few cases here to see um, like what are the characteristic findings we'll see using different imaging modalities. So first uh, we'll start with CT. So this is a case of a 40 year old male who presented with left lower quadrant abdominal pain. So first um, we'll start with the axial view of the abdomen. Um, this is wood contrast. So for this case and all the other cases um, following this, um, I will just scroll through first and then go back to a slide where um, you can actually see the findings clearly. So um, here, as pointed by the arrows, um, these are the classical appearance of um, or findings of epiploid appendagitis you will see on CT. Um, these include a fat density ovoid structure adjacent to the colon, as you can see the circle, and um, you also find hyperattenuating ring sign, which is like a thin, high density um, halo like a rim. Um, and all these things surrounded by extensive um, fat stranding. And fat stranding is just like these um, stringy, ill-defined, kind of like slightly increased density um, stuff that you see around the circle. So um, these are the characteristic findings. And now let's look at how it will present on the coronal view of the abdomen. So this is the same patient um, using coronal view with contrast. Okay. So here, um, again, the yellow arrows are pointing to what we just discussed earlier. So the fat density ovoid structure, the circle thing, and you also see the hyperattenuating ring sign, that's the halo stuff and surrounded by um, extensive fat stranding. And one more um, notable thing here on this, uh, on this view that you can see that's also characteristic is a central hyperdense dot as uh, pointed by the blue arrow. That represents a, a thrombosed vascular structure. As earlier I said, um, these pouches also contain vessels, right? So that's what it's showing. So um, with all these findings, our impression will be epiploid appendagitis. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, so we're gonna see another CT case, but this time um, there are three views. So we're gonna also look at how sag sagittal view would show these findings. So this is of a case, uh, this is a case of a 35 year old male who presented with left uh, abdominal pain um, he also showed rebound and guarding. Okay, so this is um, an axial view with contrast. Okay. Okay. So here again, um, the arrows are pointing. You can see the uh, fat density over its structure. Um, and surrounded by the hyperattenuating ring sign, the halo. And also you see like the extensive stringy uh, fat stranding. Okay, now let's look at coronal view. Okay. So again, <laughs> the same uh, characteristic findings um, over the region of fat density with hyperattenuating ring sign um, along with the extensive fat stranding. And lastly, we'll see how um, you can see this on sagittal view. And the findings are the same. The ovoid structure, uh, ovoid region of fat density, 
hypertenuary ring sign and the extensive fat stranding. Okay. And um, now that we've seen like uh, what to look for in CT scan, um, let's look at ultrasound. Um, just to note though, um, CT scan is still the choice of modality for acute abdomen and therefore um, a, epipolic appendagitis is most frequently found using CT. Okay, so this is a case of a 25 year old male who presented their ER with left lower quadrant pain. So initially um, what happened was that along with like all this lab workup and whatnot, um, abdomen and pelvis ultrasound was requested for this patient. So here, the two images um, are showing the findings of epiploic appendagitis. So here you can see um, as pointed by those arrows, um, kind of hard to see, but uh, there's like a round, like a rounded, like a non-compressible hyperechoic, uh, like a mass-like abnormality um, that's seen on the right side, I guess. Um, that's measuring about uh, three by two centimeters. There's no internal vascularity and it's surrounded by subtle hypoechoic um, lines, as you can see here. Um, there's no associated uh, free fluid in this pelvis or abdomen. So um, what would be our next step for this patient? Recommend CT scan. And that's uh, what happened um, by, what happened um, when the radiologist saw this. So he got his um, CT done and this is the axial view of um, his abdomen showing the findings that we just discussed earlier. So the uh, avoid fat density with the fat stranding and then the ring sign. Okay, so um, lastly, we're gonna look at MRI. So this is a case of a 40-year-old male who presented with right upper quadrant abdominal pain. Okay, so um, first we're gonna look at uh, T1 weighted MRI followed by T2 weighted MRI. So this one specifically is axial view of the abdomen using T1 fat saturated um, T1 uh, MRI which just means that, um, so when it's fat saturated, it basically means um, the signal from normal fat tissue got suppressed. So it's gonna appear dark. So the easiest way to identify T1 weighted fat saturated image is um, looking at the subcutaneous fat. So like here, it appears dark. Um, but as for the um, other parts of the body, uh, it would appear the same as what you would normally see in regular T1 weighted um, MRI. Meaning like um, here, like muscle is gray, like the bones are dark. Um, well, for this one, fat is dark, which would normally be bright on the T1 um, weighted and like air is dark. Okay, so I'll go through the images, um, unlike the other, the three cases that we just talked about, this patient actually presented with the right upper quadrant abdomen pain. So um, please focus on the right side here. Okay. Okay, okay so here, um, you can, you can see like a rounded mass like of abnormality, abnormality with um, high signal intensity. And around it, you can see like a, a inflammatory stranding, this area. And there's also a hypo intense rim. 
And that's what you would see um, when you use um, T1 fat saturated MRI. Okay, so uh, moving on, now we're gonna use um, still T1 weighted MRI, but uh, in fat saturated, but with a contrast edit. So the easiest way to um, identify this one is obviously fat saturated. So you will look at the subcutaneous fat, but um, now with the contrast added, um, you will look at the vessels, kind of like um, the CT scan that uh, Dr. Sammy uh, taught us during session, like you look at the vessels. So here, like you see the aorta lighting up. Okay. Um, otherwise, other structures, uh, they are as, how they appear in normal T1 weighted MRI. Okay, so focus on the right upper quadrant again. Okay. Okay. So in this one, as pointed by the arrow, um, our findings include, well, there's a rounded mass and the vivid rim enhancement um, due to the contrast. And that's basically what you find um, using MRIT1 weighted uh, with contrast fat saturated. Um, just to note though, the only, uh, so then like the difference between um, this one with contrast with, and um, the non-contrast would be the rim enhancement. So moving on to um, T2 weighted MRI, this is also an axial view of the abdomen um, and it's also fat saturated, meaning fat will appear dark oh, um, again, so here, Otherwise, um, other things will appear the same as um, how you would see them on um, normal T2 weighted MRI. So I'll go through these images again. Oh, yeah. okay. okay, so here, um, I think you can see it a li little better compared to the other two. Um, also because T2 weighted um, MRI is generally uh, better to use for pathology. So here um, our findings are, so there's a high signal mass on that um, here, this hepatic flexure again, as we've been seeing. Um, and now you can also, you can definitely see the hyper um, intense rim surrounding it. And around that, you can also see the high signal um, stranding suggesting that, you know, there's a definitely an uh, inflammatory process going on involving like an epiploic appendage of the colon. So uh, with all these findings um, from these three different views, uh, I mean, um, our impression of this case would be epiploic appendagitis. And that's all. Thank you.